Okay, uh, this is week two in our discipleship series, and the uh, title of this message is, What is a Disciple? Now, those who know me, I probably told you this before, but in 1991, I received a different job within Allied Chemicals as a stationary engineer. Now, for somebody without a college degree, that sounds like a pretty impressive title. I was proud of that title. It sounded better than boiler operator or uh, utilities operator or anything like that. And when somebody asks me, what, did you, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a stationary engineer. But before I could become a real stationary engineer, I had to do a two-year apprenticeship under an older stationary engineer. And I had to sit for a city engineer's exam, which covered boiler operation, uh, refrigeration operation, It also had to do with the American Society of Mechanical Engineer uh, standards for boilers, how they, what kind of fittings they should have, how they should run, uh, coal-fired boilers, what type of coal, there are six different types of coal, six different types of fuel oil, uh, all that good stuff. So I learned how about the equipment and how to fix it if there's something wrong. And after all that time, I was certified as a stationary engineer. But that didn't make me a stationary engineer. What made me a stationary engineer was what came after all the studying, the apprenticeship, and tests. You know what made me a stationary engineer? Getting out there and actually doing the job. Last week we talked about what makes a Christian. And we'll do a, a quick review. And the Bible scripture we looked at to answer that came from Acts 11, verses 19 to 26. And now I'll read that through for you. Meanwhile, the believers who had been scattered during the persecution after Stephen's death traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch of Syria. They preached the word of God, but only the Jews. However, some of the believers who went to Antioch from Cyprus and Cyrene began preaching to the Gentiles about the Lord Jesus. The power of the Lord was with them, and a large number of these Gentiles believed and turned to the Lord. When the church at Jerusalem heard what had happened, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw this evidence of God's blessing, he was filled with joy, and he encouraged the believers to stay true to the Lord. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith, and many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. When he found him, he brought him back to Antioch. Both of them stayed there with the church for a full year, teaching large crowds of people. It was at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. From the first Christians, we answered the question, what is a Christian? It, a Christian is someone who has heard the good news the gospel of Jesus Christ. Someone who believes the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Someone who turns from the way they're going and turns to Jesus. Someone who experiences the grace of God. Remember, grace means God's riches at Christ's expense. 
Someone who becomes a disciple, which means a follower of Jesus. It's that last point I want to take on tonight. If being a Christian is becoming a disciple, then what makes a disciple? Are you a disciple? How do you know if you're a disciple? Can you be a disciple? Last week we talked about all the answers you might get if you ask the man on the street, what is a Christian? We talked about quite a few answers that really weren't right. There seems to be a lot of misconception about what is a Christian. It's the same thing with disciples and discipleship. There are quite a few misconceptions about discipleship. The story I told about my stationary engineer experience reminds me of a lot of what I hear about discipleship. Discipleship is a high class sounding word. It has a ring of authenticity to it. I'm a disciple learning to. Disciple. I follow the step-by-step -step instructions of discipleship, and I get the discipleship award and move on. Well, what is it? Misconception number one. Discipleship is all about increasing our biblical knowledge. We become better disciples when we learn more about the Bible. When we can say sanctification, propitiation, justification, glorification, without studying, the stuttering, we got it. We know some Greek and Hebrew words. We're at acing discipleship. What we can chart the rapture and the tribulation and get verse reference references, we're better disciples. When I've done all the Bible studies um, from uh, Max Lucado and uh, the Navigators, I'm there. When I know more than you do, I became a disciple. Misconception number two. Discipleship happens only on certain nights in a certified church building. It has to be at night, preferably a Saturday night when I'm teaching or a Wednesday night when I'm teaching. <laughs> that is the sacred time when only real discipleship can take place. There are two time options, standard time and daylight savings time. It also involves books. Preferably from my favorite Christian resources that I pick up. There are the times designated by God as discipleship training. It must take place in a church, usually too hot or too cold, and it must bore you to tears. Misconception number three discipleship is optional for a Christian. If it ain't happening at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday morning when Rich is preaching, I think I'll pass. Out of 168 hours in a week, I get it all, I get all I need to know about Jesus and living for him in one hour. Some want to know more, some want to do more, some want to serve. They're no more saved than I am. So what is the problem? I got better things to do. It's the end of baseball season. It's the beginning of football season. Basketball season's coming in. Uh, I can go fishing while it's still warm. When it gets a little colder, if it's hunting season, I can go and bag myself a deer. Uh, I got a lot of things I can do. After all, everybody would be happy I even show up at all. When you hear the words disciple and discipleship, are these some of the things that cross your mind? What if discipleship and being a disciple is something more? 
What if discipleship and being a disciple really made a real difference in my life and your life? What if discipleship helped you to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ? Let's define discipleship, shall we? And let's let Jesus define it for us in uh, the Bible. We'll go to Luke 9, verses 23 and 24. Then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. We have to begin by, by defining the cycle. Jesus says, if any of you wants to be my follower, he's saying, if anybody wants to follow me, if anybody wants to be associated with me, if anyone wants to walk with me and be with me, if anyone wants to follow me, that is the biblical definition for disciple. It's a follower of Jesus Christ. And Jesus tells us what being a disciple requires. Being a disciple requires self-denial. And denial is not a river in Africa that passes through Egypt. It's turning from your selfish ways. And when we think of self-denial, it's usually in a negative way. I have to give up this. I can't do that. We've got to be mean and cruel to ourselves. We have to live boring lives, and we can't do everything exciting. But self-denial is all about changing priorities, actually. Whatever has priority in our life will dictate what happens in our lives. Jesus wants us to make him our number one priority, not ourselves. It's not the person who you look at in the mirror that sets your priorities. If it is, then you're not following Jesus. You become your own Lord of your life. And to be a true follower of Jesus, a real disciple, we really need for him to be the Lord of our life. Now, if he is Lord, that means we must become servants. And being a disciple requires total commitment. Take up your cross daily. When Jesus took up his own cross, it took his total commitment. He was totally committed to what he came to do. Dying on the cross is our substitute for our sin penalty which is death. Jesus wants our total commitment in return. He wants us to be totally committed to him and his purpose for our lives here and now. Being a disciple requires complete obedience. Follow me. To follow Jesus means more than walking behind him. It means to follow, to follow all he has said. It means to follow his words as we live our lives. Jesus wants people who do what he calls them to do. That's the definition of disciple. So what is discipleship? We'll read Ephesians 4, 11 to 13 again. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue 
And so we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. So God has put people within the church to help other people become disciples of Jesus Christ. People like me are to prepare God's people for works of service. That's why I teach. I'm to unify God's people in faith and knowledge. I'm to help God's people become the true Christians to become like Christ. And discipleship is Christians helping other Christians become like Jesus Christ. So that as I reach out to those who are willing to be disciples of Christ Jesus, then they go out and they reach others to become disciples of Christ Jesus. It's, uh, this is how he builds up his body. I become like Christ Jesus. My wife becomes like Christ Jesus. The congregation, one at a time, becomes like Christ Jesus. We go out and make Jesus known to those in our community and they become like Jesus and so on and so forth and that's how we build up the community of Christ the body of Christ within our community God has put other people within the church to help other people become disciples of Christ Jesus. We're to serve other people. We're to unify God's people in faith and knowledge. We are to help each other become mature Christians, become like Christ. So let's see if we can clear up some of our previously mentioned misconceptions about discipleship. Our number one misconception, discipleship is all about increasing our biblical knowledge. I like to say in the scriptures it says, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Discipleship is all about increasing our knowledge of God. Discipleship includes learning more about the Bible and the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. But that's not the end, the be all and end all of discipleship. It's more than learning about, it's a relationship. I remember when I was little, my, and uh, I was walking with my father, and uh, we would come to a corner where uh, the traffic light was. And he would take my hand, and he would take my twin brother's hand, and we would wait on the corner, and we would walk with him until we were safely across the street. That's what kind of relationship Jesus wants with us. He wants hold us by the hand. He wants to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with us. Some of us who are married or who've been married, we know that relationship we have with our spouse, how it's so loving and so intense that sometimes you could be in a room and you don't have to say anything at all. You know that you're one person. And that's the kind of relationship our Lord wants to have with us.
Discipleship helps us to know God more deeply and fully. Discipleship takes us past the words printed on a page to a living God who seeks us personally. Now our second misconception. Discipleship happens only on certain nights in a certified church building. Well, I hope not. <laughs> The truth is, discipleship can take place anywhere at any time. Jesus gave the 12 apostles on the job training. Jesus will give us on the job training if we will be sensitive to his Holy Spirit. God is always seeking to use us where we work, where we play, wherever we are. We need more Christians discipling other Christians, not in a classroom setting, but in a real world setting. Our third misconception, discipleship is optional for a Christian. The truth of the matter is, discipleship is not optional for a Christian. All Christians are called to follow Jesus. All Christians are called to find what Jesus has specifically for them to do. God desires that all Christians walk with him, enjoy him, and grow deeper in that relationship with him. And also encourage others to do the same. Our fourth misconception, discipleship's goal is to show me the rules to be a better Christian. Well, if it was all just a matter of rules, we could have stayed within Judaism and uh, tried to follow the 613 rules that are put down in the Old Testament. But discipleship goal, uh, discipleship's goal is to teach you how to be like Jesus. God doesn't want you to memorize rules and regulations. In Romans 8, 29, it says, For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. He wants you to be like his son, Jesus Christ. He wants the world to see his son through you. God's goal for discipleship is for you to be a reflection of Christ Jesus our Lord. The first step to discipleship is to step out and follow Jesus. Accept him, trust him, then follow him. For those who may not know that Jesus is Lord of your life. We encourage you to call Hope Philadelphia Church. If you don't have a Bible, we'll get you a Bible. If you don't know how to have a relationship with Jesus, we'll talk to you and we'll pray with you over the phone. Or you may come visit us and see what real life in Jesus is. God bless you, Satan.